All right, so now we'll talk about uh, simplicial complexes, which are a way to assemble uh, simplices together. It's like to start representing uh, topological spaces. Okay. Okay, so let me give you a definition for what a simplicial complex is. All right, so a simplicial complex. It's basically a collection of simplices uh, with certain nice properties. Right? So is a finite collection uh, of simplices. And we denote this by K, K with the property that uh, if you have a simplex, uh, which is an element of the simplicial complex, and uh, you have faces of that simplex. Uh, so tau is a face of sigma. Okay, this implies that uh, tau itself is an element of the simplicial complex. So put another way, it's like this collection of simplices is closed under taking uh, faces uh, of entries in uh, the set, okay? So that's one thing. Uh, and then another thing is that, uh, so given uh, two elements of uh, the simplicial complex, let's see, sigma and sigma zero, okay, in the complex, then you can look at the intersection sigma intersect sigma zero, okay, is either empty okay, or it is a face of both of these um, simplices. So it's a face of both <coughs> sigma sigma zero. So put another way, this is a, a, just a guarantee that the, you know, it's like the simplices are glued together nicely so that when they intersect, they only intersect it's like on their, um, on their faces. Okay. All right. So in the case, <coughs> so, um, so of course, if you have a simplex, you can talk about uh, its dimension. Um, so when you have a collection of simplices, uh, in particular, simplicial complex, we also want to talk about the dimension of that uh, simplicial complex. So the dimension of K, right, is the maximum dimension of the simplices it contains. So that's one concept. And then the other concept is the idea of what is called the underlying space. Okay, so the underlying space. Which I denote by uh, sort, of, sort of like the absolute value of K, right? It's the union of the simplices. course, it's like when you take this union, then it's going to be a subset of uh, Rd, where um, you have some sort of uh, ambient space, right? And then so once you have that, you have to then also um, define a topology. And this, uh, and the topology we're going to endow, it's like this underlying space with, uh, is the subspace topology, which uh, comes from um, looking at the topology of uh, Rd and then um, saying that you know, it's like any open set in um, the underlying space is um, the intersection of an open set. It's like an RD um, with uh, sort of um, the underlying space. Okay, 
So, uh, so it's the union of simplices. So that's geometrically what it is. All right, and then you have to uh, in sort of define a topology in it. So with the subspace topology. induced by the ambient space. RG. Right? Okay. So, so the reason, of course, uh, why I want to, um, you know, endow, it's like the underlying space uh, with a topology is because I'm going to start talking about, you know, using these simplicial complexes to represent um, some topological space, okay? Um, and, and so, uh, as you will see in a little bit, uh, you know, having that topology is important. It's like to make things uh, <coughs> make sense in that setting. Okay. So, if you have a topological space, right? Uh, X okay has a triangulation <coughs> if there is a uh, simplicial complex K together um, with a homeomorphism between uh, X and the underlying space of K. Okay? All right. So, so basically, it's like you have, again, some topological space X, right? So that's a space with a topology on it. All right? And we want to talk about triangulating inside this topological space. Um, and the way we do that is that we, um, you know, we introduce this simplicial complex. And this simplicial complex, uh, you know, is such that there's a homeomorphism uh, between X and the underlying space of the simplicial complex, then we say that uh, the topological space X has a triangulation. Okay, so uh, as is always the case, it's like when we work with topology, right? If you have things which are homeomorphic to each other, then the topological uh, invariants, it's like are invariant. That's almost a tautology. That's a tautology in a sense because uh, basically by definition, it's like a topological invariant. Uh, is uh, insensitive, it's like to, um, you know, things, it's like which are homeomorphic to each other. Okay, anyhow, um, so, so hopefully it's clear, it's like uh, why you want to introduce this notion of triangulation. It's because we want to replace the topological space, it's like with the simplicial complex, and then do the calculations, if you will, uh, on the simplicial complex itself. Okay, then we say that a topological space is triangleable. Right? If a triangulation exists. So the other thing we want to do is to look at um, subsets, if you will, of the simplicial complex, which are again themselves simplicial complexes. Um, so we refer to such things as subcomplexes. So a subcomplex of K is a subset, let's say L, which is contained in K. <coughs> that is also a simplicial complex. Okay, 
and we say that the sum subcomplex is full, okay. Okay, if um, it contains all the simplices in K that are spanned by vertices in L. Okay. So maybe let's uh, have an example of that, just so that uh, it's clear what's going on, all right? So let's say we have the tetrahedron, okay? All right, so U0, U1, U2, and U3, that's sort of filled in, right? Uh, and in particular, you could have, um, you could have something like this, right? Which is U1, U2, and U3, all right, but I only have the um, the edges, right, and the um, and the <coughs> the vertices that's like associated. So I'm not going to fill in. It's like this two simplex here. Okay, so so this of course is still a subcomplex of uh, this original um, tetrahedron. Okay, it's easy to convince yourself that it is closed under um, you know taking faces it's like of the uh, simplices which are there uh, and that you know when you take um, two simplices in this um, the intersection is again a simplex or the empty set okay um, so so this is a subcomplex um, but it's not a full subcomplex because again it doesn't contain uh, the the sort of the triangle which is spanned by u1 u2 and u3 okay so even though u1 u2 and u3 right uh, has spans a triangle it's like in the original complex right that triangle is not here so it's not full okay all right so this of course is a, a special example of uh, um, a, a skeleton it's like well not technically it's like um, but um, if you will it's like you can think of this as being the skeleton of a um, um, of a triangle, okay, of a two simplex, uh, and let me sort of explain what I mean by that. So, an important subcomplex is this idea of a <coughs> is the J skeleton. Okay. And uh, and it's denoted by um, K with a superscript uh, J, it's like but in parentheses. Okay. So this is just a set of simplices uh, which are in the original simplicial complex, um, but with the property that uh, you only look for simplices which are dimension less than equal to j. Okay, so the dimension of sigma is less than equal to j. Okay, so um, so in this example, if you had uh, you know this triangle u spanned by u1, u2, and u3. Right, uh, and then you looked at the um, the one uh, skeleton. It's like of that, then that basically it's like omits the uh, the two simplex because it's dimension greater than two. Okay, so it just has again. It's like the edges. It's like and the vertices, but it doesn't have this two dimensional piece here. Okay, and you could also have the zero skeleton of this. And the zero skeleton just gives you the vertices. Okay, so. Um, so the zero skeleton, okay, is the vertex set. Okay, so the vertices of K 
okay, are just given by the zero skeleton. Okay, and then as, as we have sort of observed before, right, these skeletons in general are not full uh, subcomplexes. So skeletons are generally not full. Okay, all right. Um, Now we're going to uh, introduce a few more concepts which uh, have to do um, with, in some sense, the neighborhood, if you will, at Psychopha Simplex. Okay, so the star of a simplex tau, okay, denoted by star st of tau, right, is the set of simplices um, which um, which are um, cofaces, it's like of tau, okay? So sigma is an element of K such that uh, tau is a uh, face of sigma. Alternatively, sigma is a coface of tau, right? So this consists of the cofaces. And, and one observation is that in general, this is something which is not uh, closed under taking faces. So it's not a subcomplex. So it is generally not closed under taking faces. Okay. So, uh, so what you can do, of course, is that you can add it's like the missing faces so that you get a complex. Okay, so adding the missing faces gives a simple complex. which we refer to as the closed star. Okay, denoted by ST bar tau, which is the smallest simplicial complex which contains uh, the star, right? So maybe let's look at an example of this. So let's again look at this situation where you have a two simplex, uh, and then you want to look at the, uh, okay, so that's what I call sigma. Okay, actually let's just uh, call that entire collection, it's like uh, K, and then we have, uh, you know, it's like tau, which is just this piece here, okay. So if you want to look at the star, you want to look at all the, um, all the things which have um, um, tau as a face. Okay, so you want to look at all the cofaces. Um, so you have this and you have, um, so you have the two simplex, right? And you have the edges here, right? And that is the face, sorry, that's the star um, but it's not a complex because it's missing uh, this last uh, vertex, right? So that vertex obviously is totally disjointed it's like from that edge, right? So, um, so there's no relationship between the two. That's not going to be in the star. Um, but of course, it's like in order to make this a, a simplicial complex, you have to have the um, you have to have it's like the boundaries. It's like of the um, you have to have, well, the proper faces is like off this edge, which includes um, that particular vertex, okay? 
So, um, so this thing here, so, okay, so if you have this as tau, then this is the star of tau, and then the closed star of tau is, is actually the whole thing. Okay. All right, so hopefully that gives you an example of, of what we're referring to here. Okay, and then finally, the other concept uh, is this idea of the link. So the link LK of tau is the set of uh, <coughs> sort of vertices in the star of tau such that the intersection between uh, that vertex and tau, okay, is, oh, sorry, the closed star, right, is the empty set. Okay, so, um, so in this case, for example, if, the, if you have that edge, then the closed star is, has that point, but that, that vertex, right, and that intersection at the vertex with that edge is empty, so you know that that vertex is in this link. Okay, so this consists of simplices in the closed star at a disjoint. Okay, so, so let's uh, look at a few special cases of this link, right? So if tau is a vertex, then uh, the link of tau is just the closed star of tau, excluding the star of tau. Okay, but then more generally, Right, the link of tau is the closed star of tau, um, excluding the union of the stars of V, where V is uh, a face of tau. Okay. Um, so another way to sort of think about this is that if you think of the closure operation as, um, in some sense, completing any collection of um, Simplices so that it is actually a complex, and this is a little bit like saying that the link is the closure of the star of tau, excluding uh, the star of the closure of tau. Okay, so anyway, so um, so we'll we'll see um, more of that. Okay. All right. So this is uh, so these are some of the main operations which show up. It's like when you're working with uh, sort of actual geometric realizations of simplicial complexes. Um, and then there's sort of a more abstract formulation that's like our simplicial complexes where we don't worry about embedding it um, into an ambient space, uh, and which we'll talk about later. All right, so let me stop here for now.